fellowship with the Lord. It's not something that we sit and study and look at, but it's our fellowship with Him.
Everybody's looking around at each other. What was that word? Was that from God? And I, I'm telling you right here, everybody in the room, their feet fell out from underneath them, and the whole room went crazy. Wow. The Lord said, I tickle you. Well, if he says he's going to tickle you, honey, there's going to be some sound. Yeah. <laughs> some of you are, I hope he wakes you up tickling you. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. We have a wonderful guest, Christ Jesus, in our house today. He's the Lord of hosts. Amen, amen. But we have a young lady here. She's the granddaughter of A.A. Allen. Wow. Come on, you better say praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Someone had a vision of me in Jerusalem, and I was on this high chair, just had it recently, and I was either talking to A.A. Allen or William Brown. Now listen, when that word was given to me, I knew it was connected to something else. You understand? Yeah. I didn't know what God was going to do. And so she's sitting here this morning, and I don't know her first name, but I want you to come up. Will you? This is A. Allen's granddaughter. God is allowing you to meet history here this morning. Come on, praise the Lord. Let her tell and share what she knows, and I'm sure you have a lot you to share with us. Great-granddaughter. I'm too young to be a great-granddaughter. Okay. So my, uh, my grandpa was A. Allen's first one son, and I had the privilege of growing up around the power of God and the things of God and right reading the Miracle Magazines. It was called the Miracle Magazine. It came out every month, and it was filled with what God was doing as the world's largest tent was being taken from place to place. Some of you are shaking your head like, yes, I got those miracle magazines. I know what we're talking about here. Uh, you know, I, I heard about Ruth Ward Heflin for the first time while I was in Miracle Valley back in 2006, 2007. And the reason was, was because there was a, a tent meeting that was happening. Uh, my husband and I, boyfriend and girlfriend at the time, were down there at, for this meeting. And the power of God showed up. And this gold dust just covered people and you know gold fillings in, in their mouths and the presence of God just showed up and um, one of the people that got covered in gold dust said you know I learned about this because of Ruth Ward Heflin <laughs> I know the glory of God shows up in my life because I, I pressed in and learned from somebody who knows um, how to press into the presence of God and I had the privilege of growing up under a family who knew what it meant to press into the things of God. My own grandfather was born blind. And it was that very thing that caused A. A. Allen to say, I must have more of God. So wow. if you've ever heard of his book, um, he, read, uh, he, he did write over 50 books, but uh, this one in particular was about the, the power of God's miracle working power, uh, the price of God's miracle working power. And he talks about these things that he did. He checked off these things to get into the presence of God. Mm -hmm. And there were a few things that were just between him and God, but most of them are things that we can all really relate to and press into. And in the process of him doing that, he was persisting because he said, you know what, I've got a son who's blind. Something's got to shift. He went to an Oral Roberts meeting. He, he would just show up hungry. And my great grandma was a very educated and wonderful, steady Quaker woman, and she was a real backbone for him in, in the midst of all of that. And he would just get into that private space. Nowadays, you know, hindsight's a great thing. I've never really understood why my great-grandpa went into the closet to pray and to seek God for something. And when God showed up and that closet filled with light, he had nothing to write with. He was scrambling for a box and a crayon to try and write something down. But he didn't know that God speaks when he shows up. Yeah. Because we get to know those things because we learn them from someone else. So, you know, if you expect to hear from God, bring some paper and pen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and come expect it to hear the presence of God show up in your life in a real tangible way. So he did. And he began to check these things off that God said, do these things. And there came a day where my grandpa 
was healed and he was no longer blind. Thank you. I uh, watched all my life as people complimented him on his eyes. He had very icy blue, beautiful eyes. He had perfect sight when he died. And that is the power of God. We saw God do incredible things. I got to witness God do incredible things. But I also saw that there was, you know, I was talking to Bonnie this morning about this. I was hungry to see why is this not happening right now? Because I grew up after the 50s and 60s, after the healing revival. And that was an incredible outpouring of God. But then the church got comfortable in some way. And then we see, you know, the Jesus people and God's continually moving. But I really believe that God's starting to shift something. There's, his presence is everywhere, it's always with us, but he's showing up in a very tangible way, in a fresh way in this season. And I really believe that Arizona is a huge part of what he is going to start with. It's like the, the spear of the arrow, you know? There's something that's shifting. And so my husband and I have actually moved. We've been missionaries over in England for the last 17 years, and we have just moved here because uh, we're in the process of working to acquire the property down in Miracle Valley. Yeah. 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 So this property, uh, the, the town was established by A.A. Allen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My grandpa built most of these buildings, the Bible College. It was a training center. And there was you know, dormitories and apartments for the married couples. And there's classrooms and meeting mm -hmm. halls and the tabernacle, which seats 3,000. Though in today's code, that's probably 2,500. And it's a lot of uh, wonderful, wonderful space there. Uh, the prayer tower just yeah. in the front of the foyer, you can really feel the presence of God when you just step yes, onto the land. Amen. When yes. I went on, just barely touched my toe over the, the land uh, late last year, God said very clearly to me, it's time to take the land and recover all. I don't know about you, but all means all. And I don't know what this looks like, but God does. And so we're pressing in. I would really encourage you to follow along with this exciting journey, but not because of us and what we're doing. And yes, this is a legacy project, but it's because we're part of something bigger than ourselves. God's doing something in Arizona. He's doing something in this nation. And we want to help support and, you know, shore up what God's doing and, and come alongside of what God's doing bring some fresh blood to it. So we've had a huge amount of success so far. They actually tried to demolish the buildings earlier this year. And we went down there and um, showed up and said, you know, myself as a, I probably sounded like a disgruntled great granddaughter and said, you can't do that. This is a historic property. And they said, okay, we'll, we'll assess it. And so they did. And they have deemed the property eligible for listing in the yeah. National Register of Historic Places. So not only could it be preserved as um, a wonderful place for people to come and see for themselves mm -hmm. what the power of God is capable of, uh, to go into a place. I, I've been an artist for a long time, and I know that three quarters of you sitting in this room today are a visual or hands-on learner. You can't give a book to those people and expect them to understand how good God is or how big he is. Those people have to walk amongst it. Yes. And that's what we want to do, is let people walk amongst the power of God and come encounter him for themselves, but also see um, being a part of something bigger than ourselves that, that God's doing in the earth today. And so can I just ask you to be praying with us? And, partnering with us and what God is doing. Um, you can, uh, we've started a nonprofit. it's called Miracle Valley Oasis Center. So you can just go on to miraclevalleyoasiscenter.org and have a look at what we're doing and, and just pray with us and see God do a miracle at this time. And I wanna um, take back to a time in the healing revival and share a testimony if you're good with that. <laughs> I love the testimony of God because it releases the power of God again. And there is uh, a testimony. You can watch it on YouTube if you want. If you put in to YouTube search A.A. Allen and you put in next to it stomach cancer, you can watch the stomach cancer healing. 
which is a lot of fun, as you see this man on a stretcher, completely unable to get off anything. I apologize, my voice is very, you know, I've been talking a lot to people recently. <laughs> so um, what we did is we, we get to watch as God brings this person off of a stretcher, and it's, it's not enough for him to just get off the stretcher. He says he's hungry. So they get him some milk, and he downs the milk, and, yeah. and A. Allen says, maybe you should slow down, you know, let's not do this too quick. And then he asks for a sandwich, and he downs the sandwich, and he's, you know, going for it. it the power of God completely changed his body immediately. Yeah. And, you know, there's some incredible testimonies. God yeah. did some incredible things. Uh, one time there was, a, it's, it's classed as the greatest healing that ever happened in A. Allen's ministry boy with 26 miracles yeah, yeah. yeah. he had incredible yeah. miracles and there's something that happened afterwards that most people miss so what happened was he had 26 things wrong with him A. Allen goes into the meeting and he says I'm seeing a vision he would often see like a TV screen behind um, over the people and it would just be a reel so he could watch what was happening and he's saying I see a woman She's traveling over state by state in the car. She comes in, there you are right there, come forward. So she comes forward with her son and I've spoken with two people who were in the room at the time and they both did not know one another but they shared the exact same thing. This boy's tongue snapped back into him. His limbs began to pop like pieces of wood snapping into place. It, everything completely changed in his entire body. All 26 things totally miraculously healed. And do you know, that night, not one person left unhealed. Amen. That is the fun part because the presence of God was so strong and the faith rose in the room that almost simultaneously all the people in the wheelchairs, they just stood up. All the people in the cots just stood up. All the people with hearing aids pulled them out. People with crutches threw them down. Across the room, they said not one person left unhealed. And then for two weeks, they stayed in that place and people came from miles and miles and not one person left unhealed for two weeks. This is because they saw a demonstration of the power of God. And this is what Jesus used to do. He used to go and demonstrate that he was capable of bringing the Father to us. And then we saw him share. He always demonstrated. Yeah. And I want to just encourage you that when we seek God for ourselves, we have to be in a position to cultivate the presence of God so much in our lives that we know that if somebody comes to us, they don't leave with us, they leave with Jesus. Mm -hmm. That is my heart's cry. That's what I want to spend my life doing, is making sure that what they get is Jesus when they come to me. Let's do that. Yeah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Nobody else is down here this morning, but I feel another guy down there. How many remember I told you the story about the child with the 26 diseases? I think he had eyes that were formed also. He didn't have any eyes. His hands and feet were like this. Brother Shambach came to our camp. I think Brother Shambach was his song leader. But my friend Virginia Dennis was Brother Shambach's cook. And he told us the story. And Brother Haflin made it a point of getting all the videos they took I don't know how they got him on videos of Alan Branham and Cole. Now I'm here to tell you that of all the moves in the United States, Amy Simple McPherson was one of them. Azusa Street was like the beginning, I think. Amy Simple McPherson, A. A. Allen, but it happened here. I believe he prayed a prayer. I really believe he prayed a prayer that God will let his ministry, the ministry he gave him extend out of this place. Yeah. I mean, it all goes together. Arizona, an arrow, yeah. you know, it's beginning of the alphabet. Yeah. Yeah. 
but more miracles. They said that they, they, that he played tapes, I believe, in the room with the sick people. They would be in another room listening to the word all day long, probably two or three days, believing for their miracle. It was prepping them like, you know, like you prepare the vegetables. Come on. <laughs> They'll be edible. Amen. And I told him the story here about the boy with the 26 congenital diseases. But it was, I don't think it was any eyes either. No eyes, yeah. In the eyes, or do you remember? Yeah, the eyes form, form yeah, which is pupils. And his tongue snapped back in his mouth. And, his, and I don't, he never walked. He jumped, wasn't, he jumped out of his arms and ran to his mother across the platform. Listen, I get the details of these things. <laughs> Man, it's a miracle. Yeah. Yeah. Only God can do it. And she had put her last money in the offering. I remember that. She'd gone in front of the shambach and she said, uh, listen, I've been here for three or four days and I have to go home because she was from Arkansas. Right? Somewhere over Louisiana, somewhere over in Texas. And she'd, she only had enough money to get home on. And he said, well, I'll see if, if A. Allen will pray for your son before... Did they know he was male or female? I'm trying to remember if that was in the picture. Anyway, Brother Heflin, I'm going in different directions. Brother Heflin, well, let me tell you about this end of this story first, the way I heard it. And she, she made note. I'm telling you, the, the baton's handed down to you. I was seeing that as you were speaking. He was a fiery man. He wasn't a big man. He was a fiery man. He fasted a lot. They had a boulevard there in a place where the service was called Holy Ghost Boulevard. <laughs> and a David, David, like King David Street or something, yeah. Healing way, deliverance, faith. I went down there. As I went down, I felt the power of God when I went in that place. Yeah. It was an all stretched out with marble and all the fancy things. Simple. Anyway, they took the offering after the lady spoke to Brother Shambach. And he said he knew how much money she had, but she came over to the offering bucket. And he said, I looked to see what she was going to put in the offering. <laughs> I think she threw it all in. I think that's the story. She put it all in. God, listen, that put a demand on God. God had to do something. And I think Alan was preaching at the time. He said, wait a minute. He stopped in his sermon. And he said, I see. And then he started talking about this lady that come from the state. And he said, you're here in this place. And wasn't he holding the child when he was healed? And he jumped out of A. Alan's arm. I mean, you weren't there, but you probably heard the story, and ran to the mother. Yeah, he ran to the mother. He never walked. There's a video you can watch. Yeah, yeah he couldn't. But here's what happened. People ran, I think, and poured money on this woman. She had more than enough money to get home. Amen. All those people, the great miracles were all those people got healed. God only has to do, just move his little finger. Yeah. Honey, if he moves his hand, we're in trouble. <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah. Wait till he shows up yeah. in form. Yeah. I'm telling you, there's going to be a lot of people calling on the name of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know, the, um, A. Allen was in Phoenix when he said that God was giving him a dream for some land. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the man who donated and was actually donated in Phoenix wow. and later the other portion was purchased by the donator's brother so it, it actually Ooh, took sorry. place here in Phoenix yeah. mm -hmm. so, yeah. she's saying that the gentleman that donated the land yeah. was from here Phoenix yeah. and they were here when they donated so, so it was donated to your grandfather your great grandfather the, not the part where the buildings are it was the part that uh, was next door to it so his brother sold that part to him it was 2,400 acres altogether, wow. um, but the the initiation of that started at a meeting here in Phoenix that he was visiting for. 
we've been praying, we've heard different stories. He's buried there on top yeah. oh my God. in this beautiful, yeah. it's, what color would you call it? Uh, it's between a plum, purple, it's a majestic color. Yeah. It's got sparkles <laughs> on it, on top of the ground. Yeah. Is she buried near him also? Yeah. Yes. And we, I went down and went up in the prayer tower. There's still an anointing. They threw the dead man on top of Elisha and he come alive. Yeah. Yeah. I went all the way to California where Amy Simple McPherson is buried. And they have this green slab on top of her. They have an angel on this side and an angel on this side. I just stretched myself on top of that slab. I laid on it. I said, if there's anything left in her, I want it. <laughs> and I look for Catherine Kuhlman, but they have her locked behind the fence. I'm going to go get some of Catherine Kuhlman also. <laughs> Listen to these stories. I go to Green City Church, and I passed a brother can, can attest to this. Um, he, he got had a chair has a chair that came from A.A. A. Allen's ministry in the, in the 50s. And it's a really, it's almost kind of shaky. But every Tuesday night, people come up, he, he uh, have people to come up and sit in that chair and pray, be prayed over yeah. to get healed. There have been so many people that have gotten healed yeah. from sitting in that chair. Well, Brother night. Steve can attest to this. Yeah. It's a chair that he got from A.A. Allen yeah. back in the 50s. And he had it in his office and the Lord told him to bring it to the, in the church, in the ministry. And people, he called out people to come sit in that chair. And there have been so many people that have gotten healed from sitting in that chair from A.A. A. Allen's ministry. I believe it. You know why I believe it? Because I have one of them in my house. Somebody gave it to me, isn't it? Uh -huh. They went down and bought a number of them. They shellacked them, but there's a little brass plate on it. Right. This chair comes from A.A. Allen's yeah. Crusades. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes, listen, that was an icon to me. And I've had these people tell me they wanted to come to me. I said, I'd like to have that. <laughs> and, I was not with the and I said it all the time. And I know, I believe that's why that person had that dream about me. I was having a conversation with them. They didn't know if it was Alan or Brandon. Mm. I'm going to stretch myself here in a minute. Hallelujah. you got to let your faith reach into God that nothing is impossible. Yes. Nothing. Yes. Nothing. Yes. Nothing. Yes. Hallelujah. Nothing. That's right. When I heard that story about that little boy, how old was he? About four, four five? About four, or five yeah. four or five years old. Mm -hmm. I said, Lord, we hardly have anybody prayed for it. We hardly have any words of knowledge. My pastor, every time he stood to preach, he'd call out 10 or 15 words of knowledge. Mm -hmm. At least, then he'd prophesy over as many people. There's no end to God. You gotta let the Spirit do His handiwork, yeah. do His eternal work. Listen, I have two books on Amy Simple McPherson, one on Marie with Bethetta. Amen. God spoke to a man in a service one night. He flew all the way from our camp in Virginia back to Oklahoma to get the book and bring it back to me because God said, Get this. Because there was something in that book that God was going to do in me. Wow. And don't anybody ask me for it because I'm not loaning it out. <laughs> I, a lot of my books are gone. Listen, you, you tell the Lord you want that. God, I want that. And you want it so desperately better than your next meal. God, I got to have that. And keep telling him, I got to have that. Yes. Lord, I know you hear me. I've got to have it. Amen. And he's saying, okay, I'll start on you. And you think he's doing a number on you. <laughs> Come on. He's preparing you for the table and the things he wants to do. And you've got to believe. Come on, how many know what I'm talking yes, about? Yes. you got to believe. I saw a woman the other day. I'm going to just be bold. She's in a service. I don't remember where it was. And she had had a mastectomy. I don't know how much they remove. And she's in a service. And the preacher called out a word of knowledge. And she said, oh, it's me. She come running up. She said, it's being formed. Do you want to see it? And she's starting to take her blouse off. <laughs> Listen, you don't care about anything when the power of God begins to move. Yeah. Yeah. 
Amen. Forget about our embarrassment. God is being revealed in the midst yeah. of us. Amen. And we got to believe for God to do anything. Yeah. Don't beg him. Start telling him who he is and what he can do. And you, it's how I pray. I don't ask God to heal me anymore. God, you know I have this and I'm believing you Amen. to take care of it. Are you, you, are you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Now, a lot of times these, these miracles that we need kind of keeps us in order. Amen. How many know what I'm talking about? It gets your attention. Amen? Amen? I'm telling you, I feel the spirit of the Lord since she shared that. You better get excited. I would have loved to have been there. I'd have been climbing the walls. Everybody jumped out of the wheelchairs. Everybody lost their hearing aids. Everybody come up off the cots. Did you hear what she said? I saw in his meetings they rose up. It was like a spirit rose up off the cot. When they rose up, I mean, they can, they can hardly move. They can hardly see. And they just stand up like they've never been sick. That's our God. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 have to follow all this, you know. But anyway, I heard the, the Holy Spirit say, tell me that there is a person here. You've been having problems, heart problems. Mostly it's a circulation problem. You've got... Erratic heartbeats, sometimes you're weaker. God's going to heal that for you today if that's you. If you want to receive that, well, we'll pray with you. It don't that's take you. so long. Come on. That's you. Come okay. on. Come on. Okay. Come on up. Come on. Getting you ready, Sister Bonnie. I don't know how you got in touch with her. But you get you ready. <laughs> There's a couple more things he showed me. We're going to pray for you first, though. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Right now, in Jesus' name. Father, right now, we just thank you. We just thank you that she is healed by your power. Right now, right now, this all leads. It all leads right now. Right now, in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father. touching your body in other ways. Amen. You're broken in the spirit, but, in, but I see you strengthening your joints. Yes. Your knees and your hip joints, Amen. different parts of your body is making very strong. Do you have any weakness or problems in those areas? Yeah. Your shoulder? Yeah. Well, he's going to make them broad for those Amen. stars he's going to put up there. Amen. In the name of Jesus, God, thank you for this woman, for her dance, Amen. her liberty in the spirit. Yes. Yes. And thank you, Lord, for how you're going to use her, the places you're going to send her, the doors that are going to open, Amen. the work you're going to do. And the Lord says he's in the driver's seat of your life. I'm seeing it right now. I see the steering wheel and he's in the driver's seat. Yes. 
Yes. And he knows how to take you to all the places that he needs for you to go. Yes. You're going to know direction like you've never known it before. Yes. He's going to say, this is the way walking at you. You're going to walk in blessings, honey. This blessing is going to come into your life. Glory to God. You're going to have a testimony. I see the presence of the Lord touching you like fire. Blue fire. Blue fire. Hallelujah. God, I thank you for giving her a healing ministry. Glory to God. To lay hands on other people. Lord, they shall be healed. And they shall be baptized. Lord, in your name and your word. I thank you, Lord, for that increase. Because you said to the Jew first. I thank you, Lord, that you shall not be speechless, but she'll be a voice that's crying in the wilderness of the lives of many others. I thank you, Lord, for blessings, Lord, blessings in her life. Lord, restore in every area of her life. Increase to such a measure that it shall amaze her of what you're going to do. And more than enough, Lord, in Jesus' name, I thank you. I see you hopping around like a kangaroo. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. More of your presence. More yes. of your glory. Rest upon her, yes. God. She is free. Yes. She's free now. Free. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You're going to carry the message, honey. I saw you put it in your hand. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. There's something we can pray for you for. Yeah. There's something going on in your life we need. Looks like I just depressed. We need to pray for you. There's a lot. Yes. Yeah. There's a lot going on. Well, there's a whole lot going on in this What can we help you with? yourself in a place that's in alignment with him. Read the Bible. Do a little fasting. Just get a hold of God, we say. They said, get a hold of the horns now. You get a hold of God. You just keep at And after a while, you don't have any more tears for what's happening. They're going to be tears of joy. You're going to find that God is going to bring deliverance 30, 60, and 100 fold. like 
a great physician, but he wasn't taking sin out of your life. It's like he operated on you suddenly and took out all of that. He was causing distress and sorrow and suffering. I saw the sutures. I saw you. I saw him sew you back. Up. Hallelujah. Is an operating table here today. God's operating. Amen. Glory to God. You're going to give a testimony of the greatness of God yes. and how He's restored, yes. renewed, and refreshed your spirit. Yes. Now I want to suggest this to I've seen. I think I've seen you here dance a little. A little movement. <laughs> I mean, get on that dance floor, honey. In your home, find you a, a, a tape or CD rather that's anointed. Yes. A lot of these songs are not anointed today yeah. because people are just singing out of their thoughts or something they put together. But you just find the dynamics on some CD and you dance until you feel that the work is done. I'm telling you, I do it often. I had a stroke and God healed me in three days. Amen. But I wasn't totally healed. My coccyx bone was broken. And God healed that. I mean, I couldn't get out of a chair. I had to find something to push myself up with for almost two years. And then one day, it just happened. And it's going to happen to you. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Don't let, if you don't see it, it's your faith that takes it. Hallelujah. Your faith in God that always does what is necessary in your life. That's right. Glory to God. And sing to him. Rejoice in him. Yeah. Sing in tongues. Rejoice in him. Yes. We just rejoice yes. in him. Well, listen, I dance around my kitchen. People would think I was foolish that they saw me. But that's what he's looking for is for the foolish to confound the lies. Amen. To show and reveal the greatness of God. I'm serious. Are you and filled with the Spirit? Yes. You speak in tongues? Sing. Sing in tongues. Woo. Woo. Yeah. Get going. <laughs> Yes. Yes, hallelujah. You know this lady over here in the red shirt. She goes to Fresh Start. I started to say Fresh Smart. <laughs> she danced last week for two hours. Hallelujah. She danced and danced and danced, and I knew when she was dancing, she was in the ballroom of heaven. She was entertaining the Lord. You remember that Herod's stepdaughter? He said, I'll give you half of my kingdom if you'll dance for me. Think what the Lord will give you if you dance for him. Don't keep that devil condemn you. No. Something, Lord, just suppress me. Don't you let the devil condemn you. You know, no. for all those things just let it pass. Say, no way, devil. You're not condemning you. All that condemnation was broken off of your Calvary. Amen. And that's the end of it. Amen. That's the end of it. There's no condemnation of those. Amen. That's right, man. Greater is he. Don't allow it in your life at all. Amen. Amen. Is there, some, is there someone here that's not filled with the Holy Spirit? I get the impression that somebody in here is not filled with the Spirit, you're not speaking in tongues. Everybody speaks in tongues. And that's really important in these last days that you oh, yeah. be able to do that. That's one of your weapons against oh, yeah. the enemy. Yeah. So if that's you, you can get that right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've seen hundreds of people get filled with the Holy Spirit. So, Okay. Is that you? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I have gifts, but I never had uh, speaking in tongues. Okay. You want that? Yes. All right. Well, that's that's good. The first step is that I want it. Okay. We're going to pray with you, and you're going to get filled with the Holy Spirit. You're going to pray with me. And then you're, he's going to start giving you a language that's going to sound funny to you because it's not English or any other language you might know. It'll be another one. Okay? But you don't don't be shy about it. You just start speaking whatever's coming. It's going to sound funny, but you just start saying it, okay? Just pray with me. Say, Father, I thank you for my salvation. I ask you now to fill me with your Holy Spirit. Give me the supernatural sign of speaking in new tongues. And I receive your spirit now. With that language, in Jesus' name, now speak in Jesus' name. 
I used to be so shy, I'd hide behind buildings. And I was a leader in a ministry. Didn't have that boldness about me. You get bold when God works you over. Oh, yeah. Stop wrestling with it. Amen. Too much of that going on in the world. But he doesn't want you to feel badly about it. That's right. If that water is under the bridge, honey, That's right. God will yeah. take care of him. I give you a new husband. But the Lord asked me to marry him. So he's been my husband. He woke me up one morning and he said, will you marry me? Come on. I wonder, does he talk to everybody like that? But he said, let me kiss you with the kisses of my lips. I'm telling you, there's more to God that we're having. If something has happened to me, I start thinking about how much he loves me. I just start crying all the time. In my house, I've thrown away more boxes of tissues and rolls of toilet paper and run out of tissues. He poured in the oil and the wine. The glory that needs to be in our souls. Tell me, bleeding and dying, the songwriter said on the Jericho Road. There's only room for you, you and him on the Jericho Road. Poured in the oil. See, most people just want the loaves and the fishes. Yeah, they want the oil and the wine. Amen. You know what happens when you're oiled? <laughs> in a slippery place. <laughs> I mean, you're just slipping and sliding all over the place. And the wine, of course, you're half drunk anyway. You know, you're intoxicated by the presence of the Lord. Yeah. Intoxicated. Intoxicated. I'm hoping the Lord does reruns in heaven. Amen. But there won't be any latest gadgets up there. I like to see the Red Sea again. Yeah. I'd like to see the Red Sea. Yeah. And I'd like to talk to Paul about women. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no arguments in heaven. I mean, I'm thinking all these things I'd like to do. I don't know you can't do that in heaven because that causes confusion. <laughs> How beautiful heaven must be. My mother and sister both went there. The Lord told my mother when she came back, He said, You'll not be able to describe everything you've seen here. I'm telling you something. He said, because you haven't read enough of the word. Mm. It's all in the word. Whatever you see in heaven is in the word. She told me there were rubies as big as cars in the floor up there. Rubies as big as cars. She's trying to tell me what it was. I thought, what is she trying to tell me? And the Lord said, rubies. <laughs> Woo! And we put a little ruby on our finger. They warned about $1,000. You can hardly see it on your finger. And he said, who can find the virtuous, who can find the church, the virtuous woman? For her ways are more precious than rubies. Rubies, you know, they're from fire, from fire. But being in the presence of the Lord, we need to get a hold of God and say, I want to have an experience with you, and I want to go to church and tell it. Amen. There wouldn't be any preaching, honey. <laughs> People would be all over the floor, crying, <laughs> pouring out. Hurry out. Come and see what the Lord has done. And there'll be miracle signs and wonders. Miracle signs and wonders. I keep thinking about Bonnie that day she hollered out, Yeah! Pastor's yeah. giving the word. That's what yeah. you got you ordained. I saw that. <laughs> I saw that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. God is waiting to ordain us. But there's no volcanoes. Exploding. Volcanoes. Oh, well, anyway. Volcanoes. <laughs> pouring out the lava. The fire. Come on. You got to see him. You got to see him. You got to see him. A sister went near, you all know this story. Ruth Heflin gets a word from the Lord. 
And the blind shall see, and the deaf shall hear, and the dead, and the death shall be raised. Amen. She's in a service. We're in North Dakota. So they announce her to come to the platform, and she goes walking across the floor, and she gets halfway in the middle, and she's like this. The Lord froze her. For 20 minutes, she stands frozen in the floor. Meanwhile, there's a car outside going down the street, and he saw fire coming out of the top of the building, so he came back the next day to see if it had burned to the ground. Well, where there's a fire, there's a siren, some noise. She's frozen. So finally the Lord released her. The Lord spoke to her before he said, before she got frozen, he said, yield to me. You don't know what God's going to do if you yield to him. She finally gets in the platform and she sings the song. The dead shall be raised and the blind shall see and the dead shall be And I'm laying on the back seat with kidney stones. They're dragging me from one meeting to the other. The Lord had already told me before I left, you're going, but you're going to return before anybody else. But he didn't tell me he was going to leave because of my kidney stones. She's singing this. Now, all this is connected to my healing, but I didn't catch it in the spirit. Mm. So she, we come home. I get home and they, you know, this too shall pass, thank God. I had seven, seven kidney operations. And so I don't have any stones anymore, praise God. I told that doctor, this is the last time you're going in the so you better do it well. And she came out dancing. She came out dancing out of the operating room. She said, I got them all. I got them all. I got them all. Okay. Because I told her, we're not going back in here anymore. That's been over 14 years ago. Here's what I want to tell you. Ruth is singing this song. We come home and she's singing it again. And she's telling the story of how she was singing it. And I did the wrong thing. I've done the wrong thing a lot of times. I thought, I said to the musician, I said, what did she say? And she said, I I didn't catch the revelation in all the time God was trying to tell me I'm the one who's going to be raised from the dead. So I left the service. Big mistake. Don't leave the service. You don't, God's not through yet. You leave too quickly. Sing the last song. Let's go home. Let's get out of here because nothing's happening. So we go to a funeral of a Jewish man. And she's getting ready to go do the eulogy. And I said, do I have time to go to the restroom? And she said, yes. Well, the restroom was like as close as that window. It was a small chapel. <laughs> and my body began to shut down. The blood ran out of me like you turn a spigot on. Two-thirds of the blood ran out of me. And I thought, i got to get out of this room or I'll die in here in this bathroom. So I got the door and fell out in the middle of the floor. <laughs> And they thought I'd fallen out in the spirit. <laughs> Tell your testimonies about God has raised you from the dead. Amen. This is what we're talking about. Resurrection Woo! power. <laughs> and so she finished the eulogy about that time. And somebody said to you, my niece was there. She said, my aunt's out laying out there on the floor. I don't know if she's passed out or laid out in the spirit or what. So Ruth came running and she checked my pulse and she realized I was dead. So she had some men to pick me up and take me into a side room. She began to sing to me, the dead shall be raised. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, you wanted to do it the nice way. We're going to pray for them and come on, <laughs> celebrate the miracles of God. Amen. Celebrate. God is looking for people to sell. Here comes the king, honey. Listen, this, this is not the president. This is the king. Yeah. Come on. That's not the mayor. This is the yeah. king. This is not a baseball player. Come on, yeah. or a movie yeah. star. Yeah. Come on, yeah. he's the star, and he always moving. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And she began to sing to me. The dead shall be raised, and the blind shall see, and the dead shall hear my eyes open. Amen. The story just keeps unfolding. You don't want to hear it. It's so funny. So they're <laughs> going to cut my dress off of me. I mean, an ambulance. They got to check my vitals and I opened my eyes. I said, what are you doing? <laughs> he, said, he said, we got to check your vitals. I said, well, unbutton it. Stop cutting it up. It isn't paid for yet. <laughs> it's amazing how you suddenly get a laugh yeah. when you realize you owe something on the credit card. He said, it didn't pay for it yet. Unbutton it. Bruce in the front seat laughing so. <laughs> So we get to the hospital, 
And the, it's not about me, it's about God. And this doctor is a missionary, but he's home on furlough. He's treating me. He said, I think I know what happened to you. So he starts to tell me what happened. And I said, well, you're probably right. And so they're going to keep me for three days because they think I have cancer. I just bled to death. So, here's what I'm here's what I'm telling you. I get to witness to the missionary and dying the da the dad's going to mission minister to the missionary, and then the doctor Debbie Kendricks was with his wife. She, only they'll know what I'm talking about in another part of the city because the doctor and his wife are about to get a divorce. This taken care of. So God healed the marriage, and he healed me, and he healed a lot of the situation to my death. I, I, I'm just bringing this out. The story always goes on and on and on. God just keeps unfolding. I mean, who knows what happened to this little boy? Do we ever get a report of what happened to him? Is there any story of follow-up on him, or do you know about Yeah. Good, I mean. He's private. private. It's private. Okay. Yeah. But listen, when God does an, an act like that, yeah. He's your Creator. <clears throat> and this doctor's coming in my room for three days, so I got to know him. Well, the wife is thinking one thing, but I knew better from talking to the doctor what she was thinking wasn't there. Now, see, Debbie comes and tells me, my friend. She, she said I couldn't come up to see you in the hospital because I've been with this doctor's wife. And she said the name, and I thought, where have I heard that name before? I didn't connect it to the doctor that took care of me. I said, what did you say? She said, this doctor's like, I said, listen, he's the one who just took care of me. God is going to get you and me in the middle of what he's doing. Amen. He's going to connect you with so many different people. Amen. Because he's like Paul. He's going to get to the one at the top. They're just a little, they're the stepping stone. On the way. Oh, yes, he's connected. Yeah. Connected. And that's why you hear people like Stephen over here. Raise your hand, Stephen. He's the loudest one in this room. <laughs> he's had experiences. You ought to listen to his experiences he's had. He's been in Nepal in these places. But this happened, and that happened, and this happened, and that happened. And I thought one day, he couldn't have been to all those places and done all those things. <laughs> well, you make room for God. Yeah. You make room for the glory. You make room for his testimony in you. Amen. You make room for that free speech that he gives you. You won't even remember. I have a friend named Virginia Dennis. She died. And that girl would work with me and work with me and work with me. But sometimes she could pluck my last nerve. <laughs> Anybody have any friends like her? Oh, yeah. I, we got a few friends. I want to tell you a vision. So I'm at a funeral, and while I'm at a funeral, I saw three mansions on a cul-de-sac in heaven. They look like Italian villas, I'd like that. All gold and everything. And I thought, why were there three? Lord, you're not going to put Virginia next door to me. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you're going to see the laughter there, and we've got so I go out there with my pastor, Brother Heflin. I said, you don't think the Lord would put a Virginia Dennis's mansion next to mine? <laughs> he almost passed out at the funeral. <laughs> that's so hard. Yeah. And I said, well, Lord, if that's what you want to do, I can't complain if you do it. <laughs> but but I'm, I'm telling you this because God has all kinds of laughter and humor and breakings and mysteries and revelations. It's just not a little that he gives, you understand? Uh, the living creatures, there were four sides of them. They didn't all see the same thing. It was only, actually it was four, but it was one. It was Christ in you, the hope of glory. Mm -hmm. And he wants to reveal to you the sides you haven't seen before. And we're saying, Lord, please don't reveal that side to me. Don't reveal that side of me to anybody. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You've got to be willing to let God reveal that side. 
the, the, the church world hasn't seen the show God's about to present of signs, wonders, and miracles. Are you listening? You yeah, haven't seen it, but you got to be willing to stay on that altar. Let God reveal who He is in you, the I am, the hope of glory. Now, about speaking in tongues. Boy, more girls that are being attacked would learn to speak in tongues. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Use that gift that he's given you. It's a gift. The Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit are not the same. He said, I baptize you. I believe and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit is a person. It's a gift. And I had a man to attack me in Turkey and was dragging me down the aisle, down the head of a head lock on me. And he's I'm dragging me down this alley. He was trying to show me another way to get home. And I said, well, you should go this way. Well, this is a shortcut. And, I, and then I realized he had other things on his mind. And he's dragging me and all of a sudden I opened my mouth and began to speak in tongues. All I saw was the dust of that man running down the alley. Yeah. I don't know if you saw visions. I don't know if God wants you to have these experiences. When you're sick, cry unto him. You're so wonderful, Jesus. Don't tell him he needs to heal you. Tell him how wonderful he is. How good he is. How perfect he is. Look at all those people you healed in the Bible. There's a girl that comes here just recently. She called me up and she's bringing this evangelist into town. He was here. Remember he showed up? And she called me up. She said, I've been in the bed for six days. She said, Sister Ruth, I've had a headache for six days. I don't know if I can get up or not. So he's coming the next day. I thought, I'm going to pray for her. And I said, Kathy, sing to the Lord right now. Start singing to him. Sing to him. Just sing. Sing to him how wonderful he is. I waited about an hour and I texted her back. How are you feeling? Oh, I'm feeling so much better. <laughs> Why didn't you do it six days ago? <laughs> I'm just telling you. I had to learn these things. He said, after you've suffered a while. Yeah. Anybody read that scripture? Oh, yeah. <laughs> she said, oh, yes. <laughs> Come on. I'm trying to tell you, God wants to put joy in you. It's unspeakable and full of glory. And that joy is going to heal. Come on, that joy is going to take to the whole neighborhood. It's going to take the whole south side of Phoenix, Arizona. It's going to move up into Peoria and Glendale and Chicago and Sun City. And Scottsdale. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost. You get the joy in you. Are you listening to me? You get the joy in you. The Lord spoke to me years ago when I went to Africa. He said, prepare yourself. And I'm going to cause you to meet every spiritual leader in every country that you go to. And here's what he said to me. And I'm even going to allow you to meet the kindreds of the forerunners. And Smith Wigglesworth's granddaughter. Didn't know her from Adam. I got a, went out to get a breath of air at a meeting. She just walked right behind me like this. Stands beside me, she said, hello. My name is, I'll just say Annie Willisworth. She said, you know that name? I said, yes, I know that name. <laughs> but that was God. God said, I'm going to cause you. If you prepare, I'm going to cause you. God wants to put it in a vessel that's empty. Come on. Amen. Empty Amen. out of everything that's not like him. Yes. Empty it out. Amen. Let the miracles come. He's healing people right now. He's putting things together. I see him right now working plans for people, putting things together. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. He said, I have plans for you. He spoke to me this morning. I have plans that you know not of. He's working. Well, you think he's not doing anything? He never sleeps or slumbers. He's working things. Step into the plan. Step into the foolishness of God. Step into the handiwork of God. Step into the vision of God. Step into the anointing of God. Are you listening to me? Yeah. We went to Australia and the meetings were just dead. And we uh -huh. said, Lord, if you don't do something, we're going to be dead too. You know, these people had paid for us, 30 of us to come out there. Paid our way. 
You know how God got to revival? Some of you heard this story. A lady wanted some hair. <laughs> and she asked my pastor to pray for her, and he said, well, you look like your hair is all right. She, he didn't know it was a wig. She just reached up and took it off. And there's one piece of hair sticking right there. <laughs> Brother Heffern already said to me, he said, you better pray there's nothing happening in the spirit. Oh, we were singing. The music was good. We had a good musician. But the spirit wasn't moving. How many know whether the spirit's been moving in here this morning or not? Amen. Yes. When she took that wig off, the whole church got up and marched out the door and around the block. <laughs> She's sitting up there with I don't want to demonstrate she got a burlesque dancer in the church. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> and more preachers would preach the way it really is. God really is. Have an experience with God. Yes. Experience Him. Amen. He said, it'll be in your mouth sweet, but it'll get in your belly. And then it'll work everything out. It gets in there. It gets into where the truth is. Where the spirit of truth is. It begins to work. He begins to clean out all, all those cavities that are not like him. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yes. You got a testimony? Yes. <laughs> not a normal prayer meeting. Hallelujah. 